so many times in the book, so many of these red flags are sexism, sexism. I kept saying that. How did you handle that? How did you get through it? And you, you literally say, you know, there's a lot of misogyny on the Russian side. Um, I'm not sure that that's changed now. And, and I think that, you know, there is increasingly a cultural disconnect. And, and how do you deal with that cultural disconnect? I mean, you dealt with it beautifully um, with, with much grace, um, with humor, um, as you know, in the book, but I couldn't help but circle the times that I thought, my goodness, you know, you could tell what you were up against and, it, you know, in a room full um, of men who, who didn't know your capabilities. Um, can you talk ab about that? Because I think that's really important to, you know, certainly the students that I teach, uh, female students, um, and we'd love to hear from such a strong leader and, you yeah. know, Nick, you mentioned, you know, first um, female <laughs> NATO um, Deputy Secretary General. So I, I do want to kind of shine a light on that. Well, I'll tell a vignette from NATO actually to illustrate the point I want to make, Tatiana. And that is when I first arrived at NATO, you know, I was an expert on the Soviet and Russian nuclear arsenal. They didn't know me from Adam. I was not a Europeanist. They didn't really know who I was. So I got to NATO and one of the crusty older military leaders uh, on uh, the NATO international staff, the international uh, staff is the you know, very senior people at headquarters, not the, the various missions of NATO members, but the, the international staff. And um, I could see the first day I came into a meeting and they were talking about the NATO nuclear mission and I started talking about extended deterrence and you know the US readiness and willingness and some of the history. And, and afterwards, he didn't admit it right away, but in a couple of weeks, he came up to me at a cocktail party and said, gee, for a woman, you know a lot about nuclear policy. And I've encountered that again and again and again, but that's what I, I advise younger, younger women is you have to know your research agenda cold. You have to know the substantive, substantive issues cold. And if uh, nuclear ICBMs is your thing, you are going to have to know everything there is to know about nuclear ICBMs. And eventually, uh, you know, at least they at least they shut up. <laughs> they may still think they'd rather have a man across the table, but there is a certain guarded respect, I would say, that develops over time. And when dealing with Russians, too, there was a certain bemusement. I tell a little vignette in the book about when we went in January uh, of uh, 2010, again, with Mike Mullen, who was then chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff to Moscow, he and his counterpart, uh, Makarov, then Chief of the General Staff Makarov, were, were really fundamentally important to getting the treaty across the finish line. They both negotiated together on some very, very tough issues. But I, they had a banquet at that lunch you know, period that day we were in Moscow and I got stuck at a table with a bunch of Russian generals, some of whom I knew from the delegation and some of whom I didn't really know. And they were quizzing me throughout the lunch in Russian to see how much I really did know about nuclear weapons. And I could tell, I say in the book, after a while it became clear uh, we spoke the same language. I didn't mean Russian in this case, I meant uh, strategic, strategic rocket forces strategic. language. And, you know, you just, you have to be that capable. And uh, some, I know young women feel like it's an impossible heavy lift, but it's not because you're smart. You can do it. Mm -hmm.